Welcome guys. Uh, today we are going to talk about the GPAT examination and uh, the, uh, more importantly the notification that was released by the NTA. Uh, it was actually released a few days ago to be exact on uh, the 1st of April. Uh, but initially they had not announced all of the information. There were some parts that were still uh, not available uh, as in we didn't know what, uh, what exactly the exam pattern was going to be like, uh, what they were going to test or uh, how many marks the exam was going to be for so on and so forth and all of that information is out still some more information to come out but uh, we're getting there's enough information that is available in the notification right now for us to start uh, seriously preparing for the GPMAT examination or rather seriously preparing specifically for the GPMAT examination so to begin with in this video we'll go over the notification and all of its content uh, so to start with i'll just tell you what exactly the notification consisted of uh, to begin with it was released by the national testing agency or nta which is the agency that is conducting the GPMAT examination so they initially started out with their mission statement their vision statement etc uh, they also had a lot of information about uh, you know what the programs the ipm programs that are offered by I am Jammu and I am both will consist of uh, what the selection criteria is what the eligibility is of for those programs and uh, you know and then a lot of other information that is already available that we already knew based on the notifications that were released by you know the previous NTA uh, notification or that was released by the I am uh, Jammu or both uh, what was new information in this or what is relevant for our preparation is information specifically about what sections are getting tested, how many questions came out or how many questions were going to be tested in the examination and how many marks it was for, how long was the exam for and so on and so forth. So we, we, that's the more relevant part. We'll look more to cover what that is about. Okay, so moving on to the more important parts of the uh, notification that was announced by the NTA. Uh, first of all, we have, uh, you know, a question about eligibility, meaning who exactly is eligible to write the GPMAT examination. Uh, that's first. Uh, second thing, uh, we, have, we also have to know what, all, what, are, what are all the important dates. When is the application opening? When is it closing? When is the actual exam happening? When are the results going to be declared? So on and so forth. And uh, thirdly, we have to know what our mo most important part of the notification. We, we need to know what the exam pattern is, uh, how many sections are there, what is Going to get tested in each section uh, what the syllabus is and uh, which is very funny because the, they've, they've mentioned or they've explained what the syllabus is going to consist of very vaguely we'll get to that later and finally more also important parts like uh, how many questions are going to be there in individual sections how many marks is the examination for uh, you know how long is the exam going to take place for so on and so forth and when in on the day of you know uh, 20th of july the exam is going to take place all of that is important information there's also some other stuff that i I won't get into the video like uh, uh, what are all the test centers that are you know uh, that are where the GPMAT exam is going to take place uh, we'll have a link in the description uh, you know for the notification so you can go and check that out it's important that you do that there's a lot of information there uh, stuff that it's not really relevant to cover in a video because they're all facts like uh, the fact that there are only uh, two centers inside of Tamil Nadu for example but that's not stuff that you know would regularly come out in a video but you can link out link go, go down in the description and check out the uh, whole announcement at your leisure but definitely do that uh, so about the eligibility, uh, first of all, you need to have uh, graduated from your 12th standard either in the year 2019, 2020, or you should be writing the examination this year, in which, you are, in which case you would not have graduated from your 12th standard yet. Uh, there's one more rule here. You should have graduated from your 10th standard latest by 2017, which means you could have graduated 10th in 2017, taken a gap year between your 10th and 11th standard and still, you know, completed your 12th standard by 2020 and you'd still be eligible or you can you could have completed your 10th by 17 and your 12th by 2019 and you could be in college right now for a year year and a half and you can still take up the examination because an important part of not the notification but the FAQ section of the website states that there isn't any age limit for appearing in the examination however you should have the the criteria for 10th and 12th are there uh, what boards are recognized as having completed in 10th or 12th there's a list there uh, We'll, we'll try to put that in the screen right up now so you can probably check that out uh, we'll also again as i told you link link it down in the description you can take a look at that uh, moving forward uh, what are the important dates that are relevant for the gpmat examination as i told you the notification came out on the first of april uh, so back then the red uh, opened the application for the examination and that closes around the 30th of april so the last date in this month you still have around 20 days to go uh, my suggestion would not be to postpone it apply for the exam as soon as possible I have all the instructions 
instructions as to how you should apply and every step and a dummy application uh, system inside for you to go through uh, you know how you exactly do that we'll try to you know shoot a video about that so you guys are comfortable with that interface as well but that's again available in the notification down below uh, and then uh, apart from that there's also something called a correction window uh, so in case you're making some mistakes in your application uh, you'll be given some window i think it's between 5th of may to 10th of may and uh, in that time frame you can you know go back and change your uh, you know the information that you fed in obviously there are some parts that you can't change for example your name your date of birth your address your father's name your mother's name but again none of that information is clear within the website uh, so you'll have to wait and see what that is or drop them an email about it Uh, so more the most important part of this video so here we're going to talk about what are the three sections that are tested in the zip mat how many questions are going to be there for and how, how long is this exam going to take place for so to begin with what are the three sections you have quantitative ability and data interpretation and logical reasoning and verbal ability and reading comprehension these are the three sections in total you have 100 questions this 100 questions is going to be split in 33 33 and 34 in the same way that i mentioned which means you're going to have 33 questions in quantitative ability or mathematics you're going to have 33 questions in data interpretation and logical reasoning and uh, thirdly you'll have 34 questions in uh, verbal ability and reading comprehension and now to the, uh, the probably the most hilarious part of the uh, notification they've kind of explained what the syllabus is going to be about uh, for the mathematics section they've they've kind of made it very vague they've just said that you'll be tested on applications of mathematics in whatever you've seen till your 10th standard syllabus so this would include topics like uh, like triangles and circles some parts of mensuration a little bit of trigonometry and uh, those are probably the tougher parts but you'll also be aggressively tested on uh, you know algebra and basic arithmetic that you've seen in your 6th, 7th and 8th standard mathematics. What will probably not get tested in your, uh, you know, your mathematics section is more complicated topics inside algebra like inequalities, functions uh, and, uh, you know, polynomials and so on and so forth. But maybe even complicated questions from sequences in series like arithmetic progression and geometric progression is there as part of the syllabus in 10th standard, but not probably the more tougher bits of it. So your quant section is probably going to be slightly easier compared to the IAM indoor or IAM indoors IP mat examination uh, at least that's that, that's my that's our guess based on the notification that has been released uh, and secondly when it comes to the DILR or the data interpretation and logical reasoning section uh, they've gotten they've gone as vague as possible they just said that you'll be asked questions based on data sets when it comes to data interpretation and how you interpret them apparently and uh, for the logical reasoning bit they just said that they'll be testing your reasoning ability so we, we can't predict what kind of questions could be tested here uh, there's another exam that does that, uh, which is CAT, which is Common Admission Test. It's, a, it's an entrance exam to do an MBA directly. Uh, uh, they also explain the DILR section as vaguely as these people do, as, as vaguely as NTA has currently done. So we can't predict what kind of questions, what is the difficulty level, uh, how tricky our questions are going to be. Are you going to see half of data interpretation and half of logical reasoning within the section? Or will each question have some aspect of data interpretation and some aspect of logical reasoning mixed to give you, you know, data set? So we don't know that and we can't predict for sure. We just have to be prepared for it either way. Moving on to the third part, the third section, which is verbal ability and reading comprehension. Uh, for uh, reading comprehension, as the name suggests, you'll be given a passage. Based on the passage, there'll be questions. You'll have to answer questions that follow based on whatever is given within the passage. It's probably very standard. You've probably seen this in your 10th, 11th and 12th standard examinations and you're probably comfortable with this setting. And apart from this, you also have verbal ability, uh, which is other parts of the English section, uh, the, but other parts of English language that will be tested. So you could be asked anything under the sun like uh, sentence correction, which in involves you know, a grammar, a uh, little bit amount of grammar for you to know. You'll have to know uh, what is uh, what is subject verb agreement, what are modifiers, what is parallelism and so on and so forth. You could be tested on that. Alternatively, you could have simpler question templates like sentence rearrangement, sentence elimination, uh, paragraph completion, so on and so forth. Uh, again, it, there isn't a specific syllabus that they've mentioned. So you'll have to get prepared across the board. 
So, uh, totally you'll have 33, 33 and 34. So, in total 100 questions and these 100 questions each will carry a positive 4 marks and in case you get an incorrect answer, it will be a negative 1 mark. So, the total exam is for 400 marks. This is another interesting thing. Unlike IPM or IPMAT indoor examination, there's not going to be any short answer or theta based question. So, every question is going to have, uh, you know, options. Most likely 5 options because they're awarding 4 marks per question. Uh, so, they're, they're going to have 5 options for every single question and you'll have to pick the correct one. Um, all right, so one last bit of information. The exam is also going to take place for two and a half hours. So you're going to have around, you know, 150 minutes uh, to, to solve all of these 100 questions, uh, which means the time pressure is slightly better than your IPMAT indoor or even for that matter, IPMAT Rotak. Uh, but again, you're going to have a little bit of time pressure. There isn't any mention of sectional timings. Uh, so you're going, to, you're going to have to solve these 100 questions in any way, any order that you want within these 150 minutes. At least that's the information that we know. All right, guys. So so with that, we come to the end of this video. Uh, you might have a lot of questions about your IP mat preparation or of course your zip mat preparation now. Uh, if you do have anything uh, about uh, you know the examination uh, or the uh, IAMs that conduct this examination or how to prepare for these examinations, you can always reach out to us. Or if you have any questions about the 2IM online course, you can do that as well. You can reach out to us. Uh, we will have our credentials listed somewhere in, behind me in the screen. Uh, our email address is study at 2IM.com and our, you can call us or send us a WhatsApp message on 944596 So uh, best wishes for your IPMAT examination.